So, Brother George Applegate, we, we, we had a little conversation about sort of like the history of your, 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 your spin on the history of, of Amtrak or whatever it is. But now we asked, I asked another question about the history of, of, of race, I guess. It, I don't know how to That's say it. That's what it would be. On, 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 from, from, okay. On, about, tra about, on, on public transportation. Okay, now you, but you said talk about Oklahoma. Just, just start from where you were before. Talk about Oklahoma, you trying to make me understand how it was back then. Like we're talking about like the 60s or whatever. Yeah. It, it's just like New York, Philadelphia, any place in the United States or in the world. This is just like 1950. Mm -hmm. The same thing that you were going through in New York is what I was going through in Oklahoma City. In any place, in any place above and anywhere around the United States of America. Mm -hmm. You had your side and I had my side. That's where they come and don't step across the tracks. I got you. And when these areas come where people are on Section 8 food stamps in an area where they are not able enough to take care of themselves, they go on welfare in, a, in an area where this is the way they're supposed to live. This is what we're going to let them do. And when they get tired of that, which is called a red line, they tear every building down and build something new, move you out. And then this place that they're taking you from becomes like the boardwalk in New York. Yeah, well, they, 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 they call it the gentrification, but yeah, yeah I guess it's like. But, but, but how does that relate to the, to, to, to the evolution of, 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 of relationships on, the, on, on as you see through train travel? Well, you couldn't sit with a black white person. You couldn't dine with a white person. You couldn't come in the dining room because it was all white. And what was the staffing like? I mean, uh, black. Oh, black. And they also they, they were also the supervisors too. It gradually came to that, but basically it was all white. Supervisor, manager was all white. The the, the servants were black. So when did that start changing? What uh, in 1984? That late? What was happening in the 70s? So you, what was the staffing looking like in the 70s? And what were the people doing? By then, the, the people weren't they mixed with weren't the passengers eating together by the no. 70s? Because this where people would bring their food on the train in bags and eat out their bags. Fried chicken, whatever they could put together that would last them for their journey. That's what they had because they didn't have, some of the people didn't, you wasn't allowed to come in here. Oh, I know what it is. You're talking about basically to the west of the of, of the Mississippi River because you're, you're more dealing with the west. I'm, I'm talking sure. everywhere. Really? And it's actually, it's, I guess it's a little bit before Amtrak because Amtrak didn't come to the 70s. Amtrak came in the 70s because in New York, they had a train called the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what's the name of this train? It's a fast train. I can't think of the name of it. Did it exist now? It exists now. The Acera or whatever it is? You almost said it. Yeah, the Acera. I don't know how to pronounce no, it. No, it's not Acera. It's something. The Acela. 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 Well, okay. okay. I met people that worked on the Acela. They were all white. There was no black. And then the union stepped in and says, you go to this union, that means that anybody that applies for this seller train can work on it. But right, that train right. just goes from basically New York to Washington, yeah, exactly. D.C. every day. And yeah. That's mostly the, I guess, part of the whatever, white people, politicians, whatever you want to call it. There's not a whole lot of black people on right. passengers on that Because they couldn't get on there. They wouldn't sell them a ticket. Not, not in all cases now. Because you can come go with me, Johnny. Meaning that you're bringing me on this cellar as your guest. Okay, okay. Oh, let's leave that alone. That's a special case, blah, 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 blah. I'm talking about the regular, you know, lines that, that go all over. The regular to, to, lines were down the, to Atlanta the, or whatever. The regular you know. lines were the, was the same. If you take and look at the big picture of it. You have to be able to understand what racism 
in the United States is or all over the world because as kids get older they change the young kids change the word of racism they try to take it out of the picture out of the focus and so a lot of older people like myself if you haven't experienced it and been there there's nothing that a person can tell you because you have no knowledge of what you're talking about because you, you wasn't there and I happen to be on those sets like working for the railroad where I actually saw it happen I was a part of it so when you're a part of something and the person asks you a question do you fabricate it or they give you a piece of paper and say read this and don't say nothing no different from this and if they try to say something different than this then they cut me off as you could cut me off if I say something that you might not accept you cut me off and cut it out but it's like you don't want the rest of the world to know what's really happening on the train everything is hunky dory because that's all you're going to show you cut out a little piece and you put in a little piece and you cut out a little piece. Now you have confused the person. So the person get on the train and says, Oh, I, I'm having a wonderful time. But what about the bottom part? Let's start from the bottom and work up. You will never expose that because you're trying to cover up something. And well, we can't put this out because it might open up a door to something racism or riots and all that kind of stuff. So they cut all that stuff out. Okay, but we have evolving. This is 2019 as we speak, the end of 2019, if you will. Going to 2020, as they say. So what's, uh, you know, I'm saying what, between the 90s, say, for instance, and now, did it go quicker? Did, did this integration of whatever you want to, just breaking down these barriers go quicker? Did, did you see some sort of acceleration? Or did you, I mean, no, how, how did it's you? like, in my opinion, it's like old money. <laughs> this is, to me, it's just like 1950 in the 50s. It's still places that you can't go. It's still places that I can't go. But they cover it up and say, oh, you can go anywhere. It'd be like, I'll give you an example, OJ, they said to him, you can't come into my restaurant. And a lot of people think that way. Because they, they don't want to turn loose what they believe to what's real. Just like working on the highway. You see about a lot of convicts working on the highway, but there's none of those working on the highway. Yeah, look at that. I like to see this train. Train travel is wonderful. It's, 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 to me, it's the most educational thing that I've ever engaged in because it has brought me from being hostile to being calmer, moderate, a little moderate and accept what it is that I see. And that's why it's hard to explain to people and explain to them in such a way that from your point of view and that's what changes things because you have a point of view that point of view that you have is what you believe in and what you see then what I believe in and what I see because I see something different than what you see you might ignore something or let something go of which I might not you might correct me on my word vocabulary or you might correct me on my speech or you might correct me in any way that you choose to do so but the bottom line to what I'm saying is, as you can look around you right now and tell me how many black people you see is in this oh, car now. Oh, oh, you have a point there. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, a lot of people here. Where are they from? Black right. people. Oh. Two. Yeah. You and I make four. Wow. So how many people's in this car? Mm. 20, 30. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And that's the way it's always been. 
you go to a restaurant. Same thing. This is a restaurant on wheels. I don't care where you go, New York, Philadelphia, wherever you go, because you don't have no money to spend. So how can you go to these places? Because you can't spend no money. Wherever you're, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., that's who's spending money. Not you. Just like for tips. I, I made my living off of tips. <laughs> they was giving 10 percent, 15 cents, and 20 percent. When people were giving that kind of money away and writing it off, black people get on the train, they don't give you nothing. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them, wouldn't give you nothing. And some would give you something. So that's how I raised my family. So when I lived, I moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, and went to the Underground Railroad. Big difference. And if a person has never been there, they should go. All up in North Carolina with all these poems on it. It's totally outrageous. You wouldn't believe it. Even in Virginia. It's a commonwealth state. People living up in the mountains just like cats and dogs. What I mean like cats and dogs, but they have no idea what's going on down in the city. No idea. Then they've done that. So the railroad has brought people into a city and taken people out of the city. In every city. All these railroad stations are closed down. You gotta go to the next station that might be a hundred miles or two hundred miles to catch the train. In Cincinnati. It runs three days a week. But it used to be a beautiful station. Troops was coming in there. They was loading people up. I mean, thousands of people were riding the train every day, every single day, five to six hundred people. And it didn't slack down because people, look how many cars on the highway. And as soon as the gas go up, they gonna get off the highway and be on the track. <laughs> I guarantee it. Or the Greyhound bus. Or the airline. But the common person is gonna be on this train. Because he or she is not gonna have the money to pay for an airline ticket. I remember when I used to fly from San Francisco, from Marshall to San Francisco, for $79, $59 on TSA. That was the cheapest airline. Now they got private jets that you can get on this plane. It's just like Uber, taxi cab. They switched it from the yellow taxi or whatever to Uber. So they come and pick you up, take you out with your credit card and so forth and so on. So when you say change, your yeah, change is good. And if you're not involved with change and don't try to change, they're going to kick you to the side. Because that's why we got these cell phones. You're talking to me right now, recording me on a cell phone. Some of the people have never seen nothing like that. They have no idea that that's what's going on. And so, just like they make this, Amtrak is changing to to fit the economy what people need. People don't want to sit down at no dinner table in the dining car and have a five course meal. They want it all around. Bring the salad, the entree, dessert. All they want, put it right in front of me. So we're losing some parts of being civil, civilized. Yeah. To back to eating at home. And some people eat at home saying, no, no, Johnny, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. But, like I say, I don't care where you're from. You're still faced with the same problem, the same issues. Nothing has changed. You might think it's changed, but get out of line and see what happens. Start voicing your opinion and see what happens to you. Well, we're, we're happy that you voiced your opinion to us. We're going to end it here. I want to really profoundly, profusely, and all that other stuff, thank you for helping us out. Well, it was a pleasure to be able to be able to be with you for you to record this. So that if you are on TV, radio, 
Somebody will hear me. A hundred years from now. And they'll understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Even though some people disagree mm -hmm. with what I'm saying, and they'll cut out certain things. Well, we don't need that. We don't, we're not going to edit this. We won't edit But you are not giving the person his due respect. Some people will hear me, and some people won't. Okay, thanks so much. I thank you.